molten salt science. And you'll be hearing me contract uh, molten salt science to Ms. Science, sometimes even Ms. Psy. There's some famous samplings of Ms. Science. The earliest and, and, and very successful is the Hall et Roult process for aluminum or aluminum. The molten salt reactor of Oak Ridge, which we all know about, or we wouldn't be here. Uh, some Ms. Science examples beyond power and process heat, meaning they're using waste heat, but they're not, ge they're not generating their own nuclear power, but they're taking advantage of waste heat and chemistry that's unique to molten salts. There's Mizell processes. That's uh, molten salt science for liquids. And Ms. M processes, molten salt science for mining. But I will mainly talk about the liquids because mankind is always going to need liquid fuels f first. We can always get our mining stuff from China for a while. Here is the Hall Erult process for affordable aluminum. Before 1888, over 140 years, 140-ish ago, costs for industrial grade aluminum were on par with pure silver at best. In fact, Napoleon in the middle 1800s served his most uh, prestigious guests on aluminum platters rather than platinum. But after Hall had, uh, after uh, Charles Hall, an American chemist from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, had scaled this molten fluoride eutectic like process, uh, al aluminum quickly became affordable. And here's why. This, this, uh, he started out with cryolite, but the Alco Alcoa Corporation that he founded within a few years of uh, making the first aluminum smel uh, electrolytic smelter, this is, this, this is it's really a eutectic between uh, three, different, uh, three different ions. Lots of sodium ions, like three sodium ions, one hexafluoroaluminate anion, so you've got Na3AlF6-3, and, and that's, that's called cryolite because it is a mineral in Greenland, but it's not very abundant. So mankind, man makes it artificially from just mixing three moles of sodium fluoride with one mole of aluminum trifluoride. And then, and then there's like a five or 10 percent calcium hexafluoroaluminate, you know, where calcium fluoride, which is a weak base, reacts with aluminum trifluoride, a weak but very sticky Lewis acid, and you get calcium ions. So you, you got sodium ions, a uh, minority of calcium ions, they're the minority cation, and hexafluoroaluminate. And that doesn't freeze until 900 Celsius. And you can operate at 950 C and dissolve up to 10 percent aluminum oxide in there. So prior to that time, they couldn't figure out how to electro win, win anything from aluminum oxide, so they would just make very difficult super Lewis acidic aluminum trichloride and reduce it with potassium metal. So, you know, so thus it was worse than silver on, on cost. The molten salt reactor, MSR, at Oak Ridge National Laboratory is an example of a near future thing becoming industrialized somewhere in the world. It's not going to wait more than a few years. With its highly innovative aircraft reactor experiments, Oak Ridge in 1954 proved that the MSR concept was viable. Between the ARE and the MSR experiment of the late 60s, Oak Ridge lodged over 17,000 hours in successful physical operations. They demonstrated without doubt that fluid fluorides make the most stable, the safest, and the most flexible medium possible for the running and processing of all of these. Fertile fuels, fissile fuels. Fissile means they can undergo fission because that's, that's their mission. Uh, resulting fission products. Okay, well, we as members of the molten salt community already have a pretty firm knowledge and conviction of the countless benefits that uh, molten salt science is able to provide. But how can we best convince others who count or, or people who can make a big difference? How can we best speed up Ms. Sai serving our society? How can we best help uh, elevating the living standards of the people that we care about? 
you know, our, our com compatriots and our neighboring countrymen. Our countries and communities could well fall far short of what they are capable of. Industrial acquaintances and contacts capable of quickly perceiving misbenefits. The click of the Canadian oil sand entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, by um, you know, general places of employment, there's the natural gas industry that's very well established throughout North America, uh, EU, and elsewhere, especially Russia. They're really loving German desist from nuclear. Even oil companies concerned about conserving and extending their supplies of raw material. Even airline companies, some, some are truly planning for long-term survival. These four examples are just from over the past two, two weeks or so. And they're from personal experience and that of um, several Ms. community colleagues of mine. Um, I will briefly talk about how the natural gas guys can become the fastest friends of Ms. enabled oil sands. An old colleague of mine uh, uh, from when, before I got married surprised me with interest in Ms. Energy after his airline contractor just became in, integrated upstream in the oil and gas industry of North America. All I can say for now is that the supply chain savvy business guy helped facilitate this uh, supersized carry in making its biggest upstream acquisition for energy in airline history. But you can probably guess. Molten salts can rescue excess and orphaned natural gas. Uh, by, by, you know, there's, a, there's an excess of natural gas because people are fracking like crazy. They're fracking crazy. And, and so they have to flare it, you know. If, if they're not allowed to just leak it to the atmosphere because it's got 20, 25 percent more greenhouse, potential, uh, greenhouse gas potential per mole than um, CO2. So, you know, there's a lot of waste. And uh, so, so you have a bunch of orphan gas wells. However, there is a low-cost halide process related to molten salts but run near ambient temperature, capable of condensing NG to, to liquid and far more valuable hydrocarbons. NG condensed by catalytic halides. An on-purpose co-product of storable form of on-demand hydrogen. This is sorely needed for hydrocracking tar while it is still molten. Bitumen, which is, you know, uh, what the tar is concerned of is like liquid, liquid gooey by bitumous, bitumous coal. If it's not hydrocracked shortly after melted from oil sands, it will become super viscous or even solid on the spot. Um, indefinitely storable as hydrohalides, this hydrogen source is a dry, non corrosive liquid under modest pressures. Turning crude bitumen within a non-nuclear molten chloride cracker into thin saturated liquids will boost bitumens per barrel market value by 20 to 40 dollars per barrel. Cracking profits are on top of the already two, two to uh, six per barrel savings from melting with dirt cheap steam from molten fluorides instead of natural gas. <clears throat> My name is William Stephenson. I'm Norwegian. I live in Bergen, Norway. I have worked in the oil business for a couple of years, and um, yeah, in spite of, I've actually studied chemistry, inorganic uh, chemistry. So I got in contact with Kim uh, some months ago, and he has uh, brushed me up on chemistry, where I actually I should have been. But at least I had some knowledge in the, from the oil business, so it, it made me contact Statoil. When I got, uh, and I heard about the, the problems they had in, in Canada, uh, they uh, are producing a lot of CO2 when they are uh, trying to produce oil from this Lacemere field. And I managed to uh, ask the Kim if he had some um, documentation I could give them, and then he, he actually, said, yeah, and he set me in contact with David LeBlanc. And so I used a version of uh, David's uh, presentation last uh, you saw here for Statoil. And they liked this, and there was especially two issues they enjoyed. It was the high temperature, which could give quality um, steam for the SAGD, the, the steam-assisted gravity drainage of the oil sands. 
But there was one more issue, and that is the possibility to create uh, or make uh, hydrogen gas due to the high temperature from the copper chloride cycle. They like these two issues. And uh, so Statel, they, after the presentation I had, they c concluded that they would like to um, uh, get this, buy this product if it is on the market. So if there is anyone who can produce um, a suitable reactor, uh, either a DMSR or any version, but that can give us uh, enough uh, steam and we can use uh, uh, hydrogen gas, they would be interested. And they can, you can get in contact with them. I can provide contact. So this is very positive. I didn't really I should uh, come into such a uh, interesting position in so, uh, such a short time, but this is thanks to, to Kim and David, first of all. You know, they, they, in order to survive, you have to integrate upstream, and our nations need to integrate upstream in energy, and what is more you know, in, integrated than, than thorium and uranium burned correctly. Uh, summarizing um, uh, Ms. Science, serving and strategizing how to get her to serve mankind. Uh, Ms. Sai's most famous and best examples of her service to society are Hall's and Erult's uh, molten fluoride process for uh, aluminum and Oak Ridge's successful demonstration of molten salt reactors. Two examples of some Ms. L processes, meaning non-nuclear science processes for more sustainable and profitable liquid hydrocarbon fuels and long-term chemicals, plastics and the like, are as follows. NGC, or the natural gas condensed process, which employs halides that are easy to handle and efficiently recycled and produces a full mole of hydrogen gas per mole of methane condensed to permanent liquid HCs that are much more profitable for o ONG. The uh, MCC or molten chloride cracker takes advantage of three things. Firstly, byproduct hydrogen from uh, uh, NG condensed. Two, powerful catalyst chlorides for hydrogenation that are dissolved in water thin chlorides and, and just, just natural lithium beryllium chloride and some Lewis acid chlorides will do the trick. Uh, and thirdly, waste heat from the MSR, which melted out Albert, Alberta's bitumen in the first place, to boost oil sand profits significantly, like double the value of that crude. In addition to connecting with our congresspeople and MPs, letting them know we care uh, and, and our MPs can make a difference, we need to network and educate our industrial friends and contacts, and this is going to become even more critical, you know, as a critical mass. Following this last point may be the best answer yet for accelerating our MIS efforts. Industrial versus political people. <laughs> uh, 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 industry reacts a lot more quickly than politicians. And this, this was pronounced on May 31st, 2012, here in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, let's, let's give the lady uh, Worthington a hand. <laughs> and let's see. Uh, so this, this wraps up my 12 only slide presentation of molten salt science serving mankind. Uh, anybody have any questions? We can maybe talk more, but in 20 minutes or less, can you give me an idea of the, uh, the ideas of Oh, okay. Well, conventional steam reforming natural gas, you take a mole of methane, CH4, two moles of H2O in a high temperature steam, and you have catalyst, and it's a little bit endothermic or maybe, neut maybe neutral, but it has to be high temperature, and you get a mole of CO2, and all the hydrogen on the methane that was on the water is, is now naked hydrogen. And, uh, and it's pretty high temperature hydrogen because, you know, you're like the oxygen, you know, unites with the CO2, and it's slightly... You have, you have hot um, hydrogen, 
And you know, what are you going to do with the CO2? In the case of uh, natural gas condensed by uh, halogen catalysts, um, methane gets stripped of two of its hydrogen atoms and becomes a methylene radical, a CH2. And that polymerizes to stuff like cyclohexane, methylcyclohexane, isooctane. You know, it, it's all gasoline and, and you know, it, it's a mixture of gasoline and diesel range hydrocarbons. And um, the st stripped off hydrogen atoms are, uh, are heavy hydrohalides, are, are hyd hydrides of heavy halogens, which, which are liquid under bicycle tire pressures, not corrosive if you keep them dry, and you pass uh, d direct current through them at one third of the voltage and one third of the energy of, of electrolyzing water. And off comes hydrogen on one end, and then dry heavy halogens at the bottom of the electrolyzer. So you, you only pass electricity th through the hydrogen when you need it, you know, so it's on demand, and then you don't have to worry about hydriding, high pressure, and whatnot. A, a mole of methane weighs, four, weighs uh, 16 grams, so you're going to get uh, 14 grams of cyclohexane and, you know, th things that are four times as valuable as methane. And then the hydrohalides are transportable like propane. Then you just, uh, you know, pass a low, very low voltage to them and get the hydrogen uh, where the cracker needs it when and where, you know. And, and uh, the heavy halides are, are not like chlorine or fluorine, you know, to handle their liquids in, at uh, room temperature. So that just goes back to the um, NGC condenser. Thank you again to All Kim. Right.